Okay, I think we're live. Hey, Jeremy, are you there? Yeah, I'm here, Chris. Awesome. All right. Hey, I'd like to welcome you to our uh, digital marketing expert interview. Uh, we're going to talk about accelerated mobile pages, AMP today. Uh, my name is Chris Ralph. I'm an SEO training and consultant expert, founder of Boulder SEO Marketing. Um, Jeremy, we met, I think it was a couple of weeks ago, at a, uh, a meetup where you spoke about AMP. Why don't you quickly introduce yourself um, and then I'm going to let you do the presentation that you gave uh, that day. All right. Yeah. So uh, thanks for having me. Uh, my name is Jeremy Green. I'm the owner and lead developer of Indo Creative in Fort Collins, Colorado, and we're a boutique uh, WordPress development shop. We focus mainly on custom themes and plugins for clients, um, and so that's that's kind of what we do most of the time. Um, I've got into the accelerated mobile pages space, uh, presented at a few. WordPress um, conferences around and just kind of got interested in the subjects. So, all right, cool. Let me, uh, I want to bring up, oops, there we go. Let me bring up that slide. So, that's a slide from when I attended your presentation. Just like, how, give me, how would you explain AMP to your mom in like one or two sentences? I think a lot of uh, those people in our audience, they probably have very little, little knowledge about AMP. Just what is it? Yep. So AMP is basically a way for you to load a web page really fast on your mobile device. So say your iPhone, you go and search for something on Google. A AMP is a way for you to get those search results really fast. All right, awesome. Why don't I make you the presenter so that you can okay. share uh, a little bit more information about AMP and what it is and how it's you know going to benefit our uh, audience. All right, so you're the presenter, and I can yep. see the screen. Awesome. Okay. Take it away. All right. All right. <laughs> So, uh, like I said, my name is Jeremy Green. If you need to find more info about me, indocreative.com or greenhornet79 on Twitter. Um, as everyone knows, mobile is becoming more and more prevalent in the web space. Uh, there's more searches on mobile now than on desktop on Google's platform. So more people are out and about searching for things than they are sitting in front of their computer. So this poses a problem for uh, websites that are on those mobile devices because they can be slow loading. Uh, they can be non-responsive, so hard to navigate on a phone. And then content shifting. So let's say you're loading a page up on your mobile device, and as you're reading it, the content starts jumping around on you because other elements such as images or videos are loading after the text does. And so it can be very... Uh, very bad user experience as a result. And so publishers um, had this issue and they found that 53% of people uh, abandon a website that takes more than three seconds to load. Uh, this is including on mobile devices. And so if you think about that, the slower your website is, the lower your conversion rates will be. And obviously this is not what publishers want. And so they were trying to figure out a solution to this problem. Um, they were need to create revenue, and so they were bogging down their sites with ads, which made the user experience worse. Um, so somehow they have to figure out how do we make money on mobile but still provide a good user experience to our users. So the solution is Google AMP, and AMP stands for Accelerated Mobile Pages. Uh, which is basically exactly what it does. Uh, so it developed by Google, but hand in hand with publishers, both large and small. It's also an open source project, which means that anyone can contribute to it. So today, if you wanted to, you could go to GitHub and check out the code that runs Google AMP. So it's not something hidden behind some wall on Google. Uh, anyone can access it. It was mainly built at the beginning of the project for news-related content, uh, but as the project has grown, 
it's uh, been released for more and more types of content such as recipes and product pages. So the main goal of Google AMP is speed, making the site as fast as possible on a mobile device. So if you take a look at this graphic here, we've got uh, some NASCAR cars, and in the back you see the average mobile site. And in the very front, you see a hand tuned site, and then right behind that you see all of these AMP boxes. So the idea is that if you have a fully dedicated developer team working on your site every single day, then it is possible to have a site that is faster than an AMP page. However, most people don't have that kind of budget and that kind of resource. And so AMP is a good, quick way to get your site really fast on mobile very easily without having to spend a ton of money. So they've done some tests and basically by using Google AMP, your mobile site could be four times faster and use 10 times less data on someone's device uh, than if you just had your basic uh, search result page from your mobile site. So let's take a look real quick at what the result page looks on the search engine. So basically at the top, <clears throat> you have the carousel which includes a thumbnail, title, and publish time, and allows you to swipe through the results. So if we take a look at this little screenshot here of my phone, you'll see there that we have the top stories carousel. You can scroll through this left and right. It's right at the top of the results page on your mobile device. And you have your image, your title, and then a little icon there showing you that this is a Google AMP page that you'll be going to. It also has the publish time, and so with the top stories, it's the most recent uh, posts that have been uh, written about that particular topic that you search for that show up. Now recently, Google has also been adding this AMP marker to regular search results pages. And so if you have an AMP version of a page on your site and someone searches for something that matches what you, um, what you have on your site, then it will show that little AMP icon pretty similar to how a while back Google started adding mobile friendly to search result pages. So now they're starting to add in these little AMP markers on your mobile phone to show you that, hey, this page will load fast. So that's the idea is they want users to see that symbol and say, hey, if I click on this, I know it's going to load fast on my mobile device. So currently, there are over 600 million indexed AMP pages. And now the curious thing about this is that when I first gave this talk at the beginning of 2016, this number was around 150 million. So now that it's the end of October, you can see how fast the, the adoption rate is for Google AMP pages. It's growing pretty, pretty quick. There's also 700,000 domains that are publishing AMP pages. So this isn't just a couple of sites that are using AMP, but there's lots of sites that are using it now. So does AMP work? AMP is still a fairly young project. It just turned one year old this month. So they um, were finally able to get some actual data and see if AMP is working out there in the wild. So I'm just gonna run through a few stats real quick just to give you an idea. So the Washington Post said they see a 23% increase in mobile search users who return within seven days. Slate says they have a 44% increase in monthly unique visitors and a 73% increase in visits per monthly unique visitor. So a lot more engagement on their site. Gizmodo says that 80% of their traffic from AMP pages is new traffic with a 50% increase in impressions. And Wired says they have a 25% increase in click-through rates from search results with CTR on ads in AMP stories up by 63%. And there's more statistics uh, that keep coming in and keep rolling in. Uh, another thing is the ad part of uh, Google AMP. And 80% of publishers are realizing higher viewability rates on their ads on their Google AMP pages uh, within their sites. And 90% of the publishers drove greater engagement with higher click-through rates. So not only are people clicking on AMP pages more often, they're also engaging with the ads that are on the Google AMP pages more than just a regular website. Uh, Google has recently also added Tag Manager, 
So it allows you to simplify your tag deployment on AMP sites. It also provides support across Google, Google's ad platforms, such as AdWords and DoubleClick for your AMP pages. And you can use variables to collect additional values, such as the scroll position someone was on whenever they click on a specific element. Um, so Google is integrating more and more of their platforms with Google AMP. So what is AMP exactly? We start to dig into the details. So basically, it's an open source initiative that aims to provide mobile optimized content. It's a subset of HTML5, and you have three main sections. You have your AMP HTML, you have your AMP JavaScript, and then you have your Google AMP cache. And we're gonna go through each of those sections and break down exactly what's going on there. So first, you have AMP HTML. So this is basically a subset of HTML with some restrictions for reliable performance. Because remember, AMP pages are all about speed. And so for example, they have their own tags that you can see there, AMP-IMG, which is the AMP image tag. And it does some really cool stuff behind the scenes, such as providing uh, responsive image support for browsers that don't support it. Um, so it's a subset of tags that allow you to uh, make your site really fast, but still display the correct content to your users. They also have some special things such as AMP social share. So you can add these tags right into your page to share your pages to places like Twitter and Facebook without having to worry about knowing how to code up all of those things. Then they have AMP JavaScript, uh, and that's what ensures the fast rendering of the AMP HTML pages. So it manages the way that resources are loaded on the page, and so that way there can't be any resources that are blocking your content from being loaded. And that's one of the reasons why the content loads so fast. And there is a big list of performance uh, practices on the Google AMP project website that you can check out, but basically the JavaScript makes sure that all of these things happen whenever a page loads. Uh, here's a few of those things. I'll just run through them real quick. So all external scripts are asynchronous. Uh, it does static resource sizing, which makes sure that your content doesn't jump around on the page whenever you're trying to read it. Uh, CSS portion control, which basically only loads the CSS that is needed to display the content on the page. Um, and resource prioritization. So one of the things that does is only downloads ads uh, after the content has been downloaded. So that way ads loading doesn't block the user interacting with the content. And then finally you have the Google AMP cache. And this is what delivers the AMP HTML pages. Uh, the pages live on Google CDN, which is where they are delivered from, and they update within seconds. And so what that means is if you do make a change to the page after you've published it, Google knows about that change and is able to update their version of your page on their CDN. So there's a few ways to get started. I'm going to focus on how to use a couple of WordPress plugins to get AMP set up on your site quickly and easily. So there's a plugin called AMP on the WordPress plugin repository. You can see the URL there. And you can install this plugin on your website, and out of the box, you will have AMP running on your site. There's no settings you have to configure or anything like that. It just automatically generates the AMP pages that you need. So install, and you're good to go. No configuration needed. One thing to note is that it only works on posts at this time. So if you want to add the um, support for pages, then there's another plugin, plugin you can use, which we'll take a look at later. So to validate that the plugin worked correctly, you can go to validator.ampproject.org and put in your URL of an AMP page on your site that's generated, and it will tell you if that page uh, was created correctly or not. So it's a really quick and easy way to make sure that it's working right. And then for styling, there's a plugin called Glue for Yoast SEO and AMP, and this allows you to modify the AMP page design uh, with just a few little tweaks. That way you don't have to dive into the code, um, but can still have a customized site. 
So here's a few of the options inside that plugin. And one of the things you can do is actually enable AMP for your pages. You'll see that option there in the middle. And so if you want to have your pages amplified as well, you can do that right from within the dashboard here in this plugin. And then in the design section, you can change things such as the AMP header color, title color, links, uh, default image, and all of that stuff is going to affect the way that the page looks when someone goes to your AMP version from their mobile device. And you can also track your AMP pages within your search console. So you'll see under uh, in this uh, screenshot under search appearance there's a section for accelerated mobile pages. It will show you how many were indexed. And you also have search analytics that are specific to AMP pages as well. So there's a lot of diving in you can do uh, with Google AMP. Uh, and they're adding more and more. Like, for example, that tag manager we talked about earlier was just implemented a couple weeks ago. And so it's, there's lots of new features coming out uh, each and every week. So it's, I would recommend taking a look at the Google AMP roadmap and Google AMP blog to see what's available. So a few resources. Uh, if you want to take a look at a few presentations from Google I.O. this year about AMP, Here's the URL for that. If you want to check out the roadmap, this will show you what is planned in for new features coming down the road for Google AMP that aren't in there yet, but you can see what's coming down the pipe. If you want to learn how to dig into the code a little bit more with the Google AMP plugin, here's a good resource for getting started with that. And right now, we'll see if, uh, Chris, if you have any questions or where you want to go from here. Yes, absolutely. Hey, awesome. Thanks so much, uh, Jeremy. So actually, um, so I taught a class at uh, CU Denver, the University of Colorado, the Denver campus. Uh, it was an introduction to digital marketing. And at the end, we talked about, you know, the future, what's going to happen with digital marketing. I guess my question to you is, What's going to happen with AMP, with mobile friendliness? Uh, where are we at right now? Where are, we, where are we going to be in like a year, a couple of years, five years from now? Mm -hmm. Yep. So one thing to keep in mind is that Google AMP doesn't replace responsive web design. So you still want a responsive version of your website because Google AMP is only uh, available right now when you search on your mobile device. And so that's the only way people can get to the AMP version of your pages. Um, and so I would say with the adoption rate that we're seeing on Google AMP, it's good to have both. So you want to have a responsive website, but then you also want to have AMP versions of your pages as well. Okay, absolutely. So, you know, many people in our audience, or when I do, uh, I teach a two-day SEO certification training, it's, it's a very non-technical training, so most people are not as technical as you. Um, is it advisable for somebody that's not technical to tackle this themselves? Or, like, uh, tell me about what kind of customers do you take on? How does it work? Do you actually take on new customers at this point? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. We do take on new customers and we help people implement Google AMP on their sites if uh, they don't want to have to worry about all the technical aspects on their own. Um, but with that Google AMP plugin uh, that I showed earlier, if their site is on WordPress, um, it's really easy to get started. So if, you know, someone's more of a DIY uh, kind of user and they want to give it a shot, then I would say install that plugin and uh, and you should be well on your way. Okay, awesome. Just give us a little bit more background information about uh, the, the mobile friendly effort. Um, back in, I think, 2015, mobile searches overtook desktop searches. What, what do you mm -hmm. see in the future? Just talk a little bit more about mobile and how to get a uh, site mobile friendly. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so definitely more people are accessing websites through a mobile device. Um, you've got things like iPhones, iPads, refrigerators, you know, the kind of idea of Internet of Things. Yeah. You know, you have so many different devices out there that are accessing the Internet. 
Um, so it's really important to give your users, I would say, as many ways as possible to get access to your content. Um, and so the, you know, having a site that's mobile responsive is very important, which basically means a site that is coded in such a way that uh, the content changes uh, based on the screen width or size that the device um, that the user has that they access the content with. Um, and so mobile is definitely not going away anytime soon. If anything, it's you know taking over even desktop as we've seen with search results. Um, and so it's just, it's just something you have to keep in mind. Like even in my my coding uh, practices, probably about 2012, um, there's a there's a uh, coding method called mobile first, which basically means you code a website thinking about the mobile layout and design first before you even think about the desktop. So even developers nowadays are thinking more about how is a user interacting with the site on mobile than they even are on desktop. Yeah, absolutely. And, and here's the thing, let me show you this slide. So Google changes its algorithm about five to 600 times per year. It's about a couple of times a day with some major algorithm updates, such as the mobile friendliness, which first happened, I think it was April 21st last year. So Google made it clear, hey, this is now a algorithm sis, uh, signal. Uh, if your website is not mobile friendly, we may show a competitor above your website. Then the next thing, AMP. So now we see, you know, it's, it's an algorithm signal. Um, if you want to stay up to date, we teach uh, trainings here at Boulder SEO Marketing. Just go to boulderseomarketing.com forward slash SEO hyphen training. Uh, this is how you can stay up to date. Um, Jeremy, how often should somebody update their website? Um, what, what do you recommend? Yeah, I would say um, from a full design, you know, changing that sort of thing, every couple years is a good idea just to keep everything fresh. Um, doesn't have to be a complete, you know, redesign, but just keeping up with what's popular with uh, trends and then making sure it's optimized for mobile um, and other devices that are showing up. Um, and then in between that, you can do, you know, little tweaks here and there to optimize, uh, you know, buttons and placement and layout uh, to increase conversions on your site. So websites are no longer just a build it and then set it and forget it type thing, but constantly, you know, changing and tweaking and testing and optimizing is the way to go. Awesome. Um, hey, Jeremy, I don't think you're going to be bored anytime soon. Uh, there's a lot of websites <laughs> out there that need to be updated. You do an amazing job. Um, here's your contact information if mm -hmm. uh, somebody wants to get in touch with you, endocreative.com. I really appreciate you taking the time and doing this uh, expert interview with us today. I uh, look forward to keeping in touch. Any last tips, one more last tip for our audience before we conclude the session here? Mm -hmm. um, I would say, you know, just uh, just get to know your customer. Uh, that's the most important thing on your website is knowing who your customer is and speaking to them. That's what I would recommend. Awesome. All right, Jeremy. Hey, I'm going to stop the recording here. I'd like to All thank right. you and I look forward to keeping in touch. All right. Thank you, Chris.